Once upon a time, there were two zombies who lived in the basement of a very big hospital. And it was a perfect place for them to live because every day, bits of arms and legs that had been amputated were dumped down into the bottom of the hospital and they would eat their lunch and they would be very, very happy. And blood dripped down the side of their mouths and they would chuckle at each other. And then one day, the bits of bodies stopped arriving and they didn't know what had happened. And suddenly the building went quiet and they started to wonder what, what they would eat. And one of them started to go upstairs. They'd always been very careful not to be seen, but one of them crept up the stairs to see what was going on. And the building was completely deserted. And as they went higher and higher up the building, they noticed that outside there was a huge mechanical thing with a great big ball on the end of it. And the ball was swinging very slowly towards the building. And it crashed into the side of the building and knocked a huge hole out of it. And the zombie at the top shrieked and he ran all the way down the stairs, right the way down to the basement. And he said to his friend, they're knocking the building down. And the two zombies held each other in the basement of the old hospital as the building started to collapse and they could hear thuds and crashes and suddenly everything went completely black. Stop. Once upon a time there were <clears throat> a group of teenagers that used to like to hang out together um, at the bus stop or on a little bit of waste ground near a park and in the kind of edges of a little forest that was close to the town where they lived. Um, there were about maybe four or five or six of these kids, and um, two of them in particular were, were really fast friends. And um, regularly on a weekend, on a Saturday, they'd go for walks in the little forest at, at the edge of the town and just see what they could do. And, you know, sometimes they'd... Um, <laughs> smoke a few cigarettes there in the woods and sometimes they'd start a little fire or try and dam up the stream that ran through there. But one particular Saturday they found something in the bushes that was really startling and, and kind of scary for them. In, in the middle of a patch of brambles, kind of tight bushes, they found the corpse of a middle-aged man. And he was lying in a suit, a, a kind of crumpled business suit, very peacefully and eyes closed. And the body was obviously quite fresh. It wasn't decomposed horribly, but you could see very clearly just by looking at this guy that he was dead. And the two teenagers stood at the edge of this bramble patch and, and debated what to do. And their first impulse was to, to run and maybe to tell somebody in authority, a teacher or a parent or, or a policeman or, or something. But rapidly they, they gave up on this idea and they decided instead that they would keep this discovery a secret. They closed the entrance to the brambles, took one last look at the body and then went running back to the playground where their friends used to hang out and started to tell people. They told uh, a guy, a friend of theirs and a couple of other guys and before long a big expedition of them, maybe five or six boys and one girl were heading back out to the woods to take a look at this corpse. None of them had ever seen a body before, and I don't think that they didn't think that it was like um, unhealthy. It was just that for them this was a kind of fascinating possibility to spend some time with this 
dead man that they'd found. So they got out to the woods and they opened the hole to the brambles and and there the guy was still lying, cold and, and still. And they played a kind of dare game with each other. Who would go in and touch the body there inside the woods? So the first boy went in, the one who'd found it. And he, he kind of looked at the body for a while. He looked at this guy's face and he could see from the face that this guy had you know, lived a bit. There were, there were lines on the face, there were scars, there was a sense of something of a life there. And he kind of tried to imagine what this particular guy had, had been through, what, how he ended up in this place. And all this went through his mind and then, then he kind of reached out and he just touched very gently the, the cheek of, of the body as it lay there. And it, it was stone cold and, and he got a very unpleasant kind of feeling from that. And he came out very quickly and, and he didn't want to talk to any of the others. And then the second one went in and he just kind of went in very fast and he touched the body very fast and came out straight away. Like he'd done it and that was all there was to say about it. And so on, until all of them had touched this corpse. Stop. Once upon a time, there was a man who was walking through some woods in a very wild part of the countryside. And as he was walking, he noticed that there was something shining in the woods. And at first, he couldn't make out what it was. And as he got closer and closer to it, he could see that it was part of a plane, a very small plane, that had crashed in amongst the trees. And the wings of the plane had been ripped back, and the door to the plane was hanging open. And he walked slowly towards it, and he couldn't see any signs of life, and he he shouted, Hello, is, is there anybody there? And there was no answer. Stop. Once upon a time, there was a man walking in a very empty place around the edge of a a desert, and it was kind of evening. And as he was walking, he thought he could see somebody walking next to him out of the corner of his eye. So he turned to look, and whenever he looked, there was absolutely nothing there. But whenever he turned to look forward again, and continue walking, he could see this other figure walking next to him. Stop. Once upon a time, there was a guy walking through a desert, and he'd got no water with him, and he was beginning to get very worried and dehydrated, and he was lost, and he was disorientated, and he began to be frightened that he might die. And then he came across uh, a man selling things, and the guy said to him, Water, I need water. And the guy said... I haven't got any water, but do you want to buy a tie? And I was like, I don't want to buy a tie. I mean, I'm, I'm dying here. I'm dying. I, I, need, I need water. I don't want to buy a tie. Of course I don't. And the guy said, OK, well, fuck you. I'm going. And he went off with his ties. And this, the, the guy was, continued to walk through the desert. And he was, it was like getting really, really worried. And then he saw a figure in the distance coming closer and closer and it was another salesman who thought, well, maybe, you know, thank God, this one's probably going to have some water. And he said, water, I need water. And the guy said, I haven't got any water, but um, do you want to buy a tie? I've got, I've got this one, a blue one. Stop. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was <clears throat> a group of kings. And they used to meet up regularly once a month for a beer and a game of pool and perhaps a game of cards or something. And they were, they were quite happy with this. They always used to have a good time together. They liked to sort of chat about the kind of things that kings talk about, like palace gardens, problem with queens, that kind of thing. And then one week, when they all turned up, one of the kings noticed that one of the oh. others had got a kind of slightly taller crown. And he thought, oh. And it kind of bothered him a bit, because he sort of felt like, 
secretly that actually he was probably the most important of the kings. Stop. Once upon a time, there was a hotel in the middle of a desert. And this hotel had an extremely good restaurant. And it was one of those really well-kept secret places. And it was very, very classy. And the people who went there were very, very chic. And one day, there was this guy crawling towards the hotel. And the doorman said to him, what can I do for you, sir? And the man said, I want some water. And the doorman said to the man, you can't come in here without a tie. Stop. <laughs> <laughs>